All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at the three types of CSS positioning and kind of some higher level knowledge of how these three types differ. Once we look at these examples, we'll jump into some code samples and see exactly how they work on a real HTML page. Let's first look at a couple of slides to define the three different types of CSS positioning. The first type is absolute positioning. And there's a few things you'll want to note here. All three of these types have a different positioning context. And with absolute positioning, the context is according to the parent element, only if the parent element has a position. Also note that with absolute positioning, the element gets removed from the normal document flow. The second type is relative positioning. Its positioning context is itself or its natural flow in the document. And this element stays in normal document flow. The third type is fixed positioning. And fixed positioning has a context of the viewport, which is a fancy name for the browser window. And this element also gets removed from the document flow, just like absolute positioning does as well. So let's look at a quick sample of each of these three types in these next slides. When you're using CSS positioning, you have three possible values for positioning, and they are top, right, bottom, and left. Now, the way this works is if you use positive values, you're going to be moving the element in. So you can see if I use a positive value for the property top, I'm actually going to be moving it down. If I use a positive value for the property bottom, meaning the bottom edge, it's actually going to move the element up. So any positive values, you can kind of think of this as the offset. It's going to kind of push in towards the box. Positive value on left will move right. A positive value on the right side will move left, and etc. If we use negative values, it's just the opposite. So if I was to say top negative 20, it's actually going to move up, whereas top positive 20 would push down. And again, left negative 20 would actually move it this direction to the left, left positive 20 would move it this direction or to the right. So you need to remember the positive and negative values of each of these properties. Now with relative positioning, we'll take a look at this one first because it's probably the easiest to, to understand. Now, if you remember back, relative positioning is positioned according to itself. So if I had the following div declared in my web page, this is just a sample div here. Let's say I declare a position of relative and I say top 50 and left negative 50. This is a positive value, so it would move down 50 pixels from the top. This is a negative value, so it would move left 50 pixels from the left edge. So this just kind of shows how this div would actually move, assuming I used these positioning. So its previous location would have been here, but it would actually display at this location. And because this edge is outside of the browser window or the viewport, it would actually be cut off and it wouldn't be visible. You can see here the negative value pushes left and the positive value pushes down. Now in absolute positioning, remember its positioning context is according to the parent element, only if the parent element has a position. So let's just assume in this example that this blue box back here is the parent element and this brown box inside is a child tag. So the div we're working with is the brown box and it's inside of this big blue box. Now, because we're working with absolute positioning, its positioning context is the parent. So when it says bottom 50, it's not its own bottom edge, it's the parent element's bottom edge. So a positive value on bottom would actually move it up 50 pixels from the parent's bottom edge, and a positive value on right would actually move it left 50 pixels from the parent's right edge. So again, this just kind of illustrates how this box would move if I said, bottom 50, right 50, it normally would appear up here at the top left, but after applying the CSS position, it would actually appear down here, 50 pixels away from the right edge and 50 pixels away from the bottom edge of the parent element. The third type and last positioning context is with fixed. Now fixed positioning always uses the browser window or the viewport as its context. So it doesn't, re, it doesn't re, um, rather it doesn't matter what the parent tag is or the parent element, it's always going to use the viewport. So in this particular example, if you use a value of zero pixels, 
for bottom. That just means right on the bottom edge. So in other words, move zero pixels away from the bottom edge, and this would move zero pixels away from the right edge. So it would actually, we would expect this box to be right down here. So let's give this a try. And you can see how in this particular example, after applying this fixed position, this box would now draw itself in the bottom right hand corner of the browser window. Even if I resize the browser window, this box would always be in the bottom right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>